Shalom Chavrim. <clears throat> we are getting in a more desperate hour as the days go by, no doubt there. Um, I was just being uh, told by my wife that we that she had read some reports that um, uh, China is not wanting to trade with our currency, and uh, I think Australia the same. I haven't been able to confirm that as of yet, but I, I know that she's very diligent about her research. Um, also, I'd like to mention to you that, uh, of course, we know already the, the tensions that are, that are raging with, uh, with uh, uh, not only Iran, but also with North Korea against South Korea. Uh, China now is amassing troops on, on the border up there uh, near North Korea as well. Uh, and Iran has swore that this would be the year that America would fall. So we are seeing all kinds of uh, tensions brewing around the world. And yet my own heart is being pulled tremendously in a direction towards my own people. And yet at the same time, I have people that uh, send me um, emails as well as uh, the, the, the YouTube comments, questions that are being asked on a regular basis. Um, it, it has gotten to a place it's difficult to read all the comments and all the uh, all the emails. I try my best that I can, um, but I get 200, 300 sometimes a day. Uh, that saying, let me just kind of real quick just speak to you about a couple of things. Um, uh, one, I can't encourage you enough uh, to be able to get one of the one or the other of the books there that I've written. Israel, are they still God's people or Yam Suf? Now Yam Suf. Although it does look at a 3,500-year-old biblical mystery being resolved, the more importance of this book is the redemption of Israel. It really breaks it down, what God is doing, and some of the most incredible um, uh, mysteries that God has ever shown me, I actually put in this book. It's just a great uh, tool. I'm not a salesman, not trying to sell you something, but... If I could encourage you, that would be one book I would really suggest you get. Israel, Are They Still God's People? Uh, it's really good if you deal with Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I really go into their doctrine, and um, oddly enough, found out some of the doctrine they believe is some of the mainstream church doctrines, especially the, the two bride doctrine. Uh, I really bring that out and address that. I did not know that uh, people like Perry Stone believe such a thing. Uh, but just mentioning real quick to you about uh, a two-bride doctrine, it would not make sense whatsoever according to the Word of God because um, Jesus, if he were... Um, um, well, let me put it this way here. It is against the law in order for a son to take his father's wife. Uh, he would be put to death for that. And, uh, and, and, and it's an abomination and for, for, the, for, the, for the wife as well. And yet when Jesus came, Israel being in sin, uh, yet there were those Jews that believed him and became part of that covenant with him. And Paul said, I espouse you a chaste virgin to Christ. So how could Paul take another man's wife and give it over to Jesus if it wasn't that it was God himself inside of Jesus redeeming his own bride? So it's just kind of in a nutshell there. We could really get into that in a lot of other different realms. But these are just doctrines that just do not match the Word of God unless you know the identity of who Jesus really is. So I go into that as well in, in that book there. Um, on this one note I'd like to point out to you, I'd like to just read to you something real quick out of Isaiah chapter 63. Because we are, we are coming rapidly upon the scene of when the Antichrist is going to take control uh, and he's going to step up on the scene. He's going to be a religious figure and he's going to take control of this world economy. I've told you about this. In fact, I believe in both books I've written, I talk about the economic collapse that would come to this earth and what the ramifications would be and what it would mean for us. Um, and of course, this is where your mark of the beast comes from. And um, so uh, in, in that saying, let me just also mention to you, um, my wife has really asked me for quite some time. I've been getting a lot of questions. There was one brother out here that I believe he's not in support of a rapture, but he uh, mentioned that he had 10 questions for me. Uh, I really don't know what the 10 questions are, but 
uh, I, I'm going to try my best to really tackle this issue of the rapture and, uh, and just prayerfully do that so that we can get a more clear-cut answer. I'm going to really go into prayer about it as well and not to really just take one side or the other, but just to look at it. I'll take you from a Jewish perspective and how we believe as well. Um, and it doesn't mean necessarily that the Jews are right in everything either because we've made a lot of mistakes in our past. But I'll take you through that, but I'll take you through the Torah and what God says from the Torah, the Navim, the Kotavim, which is the prophets and the writings as well, and show you what is on the horizon and, and, and how that the, uh, as the Christians call it, the Old Testament, what was prophesied there. And uh, so I'll try to take you through all of that and, and just the best that I can. Um, uh, that saying, though, uh, I would invite you as well, if you want to email me your questions directly, uh, IsraelReturns at AOL.com is my email address. It's where most of the mail comes to. I do have a private email address. I try to keep that limited, though. I don't want to really publicize that one there unless I see someone with a really serious issue, then I give you that one there. Uh, I, I do notice the differences between just emails where people are sending questions, so I am able to kind of go through that. And um, if you have other questions besides uh, issues on the rapture, go ahead and submit them. I am wanting to do a, a video on questions and answers, something along that lines there, where I can take the majority of the questions, put them together that are pretty much the same, and, and try to address some of these uh, questions that are out there. Um, anyhow, Real quick, let me just show you one scripture in uh, Isaiah. I've been studying through the book of Isaiah here recently. In chapter 63, it says here, verse 1, I'm just going to read you a few verses here. Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Notice that. He's glorious in his apparel, he traveling in the greatness of his own strength. See, his strength. All right? And this is what he says. He quotes him. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. I can say a lot about that right there, you know. But here, let's, let's look at how God answers, speaks about him. Though. He goes, why is your apparel red? And your garments like one who treads in the winepress. Then God says this to him. I have trodden the winepress alone. And from the peoples no one was with me. For I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments. And I have stained all my robes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeemed has come. See, God is the one that saves. And yet, so many times, I get emails from people that are staunch supporters of the Vatican, the Catholic Church, and say there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church. Of course, that's what they believe. And that's what the Vatican preaches as well. But notice when he says, I speak in righteousness. They believe that the Pope is infallible. He is the righteous one. He is the vicar of Christ, as they call him. The one, the substitute for Jesus Christ. See, And, and notice uh, another thing that was interesting. when This one who is in glor glorious in his apparel, of course he is, traveling in the greatness of his strength. His money is his strength. And we're fixing to have a, a collapsed economy, and they want to go to a one-world currency, the only way to stabilize it. Who do you think has got all the gold in the world to, to take care of this problem? It's the Vatican and the Vatican alone. Anyway, uh, thank you so much today. I appreciate so many of your comments on my daughter's little video there. Uh, my lovely wife, Yana, who was playing the piano in the background. I just happened to catch him. I came in the uh, living room there while we were having the holidays here. And I saw my wife. Of course, my wife was playing. And here, little Ariella was just singing with all of her heart, making up this beautiful song. And of course, at the very end, such beauty the way she ends it. Uh, she said, Jesus, he is my God. I just love that so much. And so many of you, I thank you for your kind words. Uh, she just was just really uh, elated that you were so enjoyed it so much as well. She's only four years old. Uh, and I will tell you one thing. Here in the last probably six months, she has 
just had a turnaround in their own life. We just out of, seemed like out of nowhere almost. Um, you know, we do try to have a, a home that is a believing home, a, a home that believes that Jesus is Moshiach. And, uh, but yet, at the same time, we watched her. Uh, one day when her mother was sick, we were going to pick up some medicine. She has migraines. And as I told her while we were going, she just stopped right there in front of Publix and she just raised her hands and she just said, Oh, God. She said, my mama is sick, Lord Jesus. I pray you, Lord, that you'll just touch her right now. And, and I was blown away by her little prayer that she offered for her mother. And we went back, and mama was doing much better after that. Anyway, God bless you. Uh, be praying. Praying for your family, your loved ones. Pray for us. Again, if you want to order the book, uh, if you... If, we understand times are tough and everything. You just want the book and everything. Just drop us a line. Um, I think one of them is $16.99, the other one is $17.99. Roughly, we spend about $6 on postage uh, uh, and handling of these. And um, uh, if we're sending uh, international, I think Canada runs around $20 to send it to Canada. Just rough idea there. Uh, if we're sending it overseas to Europe, it can be around $25 India different places in the world, Australia, that the books go to, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. If the Lord lays on your heart, you want to give more to the ministry, we certainly appreciate it. But make a note, if you would, uh, you can go to our website, israelreturns.com, and there's a little donation button there. Uh, in fact, you can even click and buy the book directly right off the website there. Uh, it'll be actually through our publisher if you do it that way. But if you click on the donation button and want to give there, send us a little note. There's a little place you can make a note. Uh, we'd love to just send you the book ourselves. Uh, we try to keep plenty of them on stock. Those of you that have uh, been so kind to give, I apologize that it took me so long to get the books out. I have mailed every one of them out by now, though. Some of you I know have already received it. You've sent me word. Today, though, I sent the last set out, especially those of you from Canada. I had a bunch of books that went into Canada, so I got those out uh, through the customs and everything today, and some of you in uh, um, uh, the United Kingdom. One other last thought, just to mention as well, if you're Jewish, if you're a rabbi, anything like that, and I know that you do watch these videos, I've seen, your, I've seen you m send me emails and stuff, if you desire this book, one of the reasons why we ask people to contribute if they're able to is to put it in your hands. It wouldn't cost you a dime. No shipping, no cost, no nothing. Uh, if you want to pay for it, that's fine. You can order it anyway. Uh, recently, when we were at the uh, Chabad Synagogue, I had one of the brothers there ask me to bring a whole bunch of them. So we brought them for free and gave them away. Uh, I just I encourage you, if anything we can do to help, uh, I also ask you, these videos, I don't copyright them or anything. I want the message that we're trying to bring to my Jewish people to get out all through the world. Befriend as many Jews as you can. Befriend anybody you can and share the videos with them. Uh, you can link it any way you so desire. Uh, we just ask that you know you, you be courteous and to other people. I'm not out there to bash people. I'm just out there to tell you what I believe is the truth. Um, but if you want to do that, uh, put them on your Facebook, anywhere. Also, we're on Twitter. Uh, I, I'm not very good on these social networks, uh, but I'm trying. I've had a lot of people on Facebook. You can look me up as Stephen Denoon, D-E-N-O-O-N. -O -O um, on Twitter, I believe it's uh, Stephen Ben Denoon, at Ben Denoon dot Twitter, whatever you call it. I don't know how that works, but there are several people that have joined there. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I try to put out little comments here and there. And I've also found out that I can load up live and in real time. So I'm actually, uh, even when I'm out at work, I'm able to, if there's something going on, I may even start doing that as well. If I hear something urgent that I feel like you need to know, I'm going to get it out to you as quickly as possible. Anyway, God bless you. Good night. Uh, I thank God for each one of you and for your prayers, uh, everything that you do. It, nothing goes unnoticed. It, honestly, it doesn't. And... I just thank you for all your encouragement as well, and good night.